Finds Ndombele, chance for him to go for the finish shot, does exactly that. And that's a beautiful goal from Tangai in Dombele as Arsenal make it 2-0 against Manchester United. Lacazette gets past his man, Lacazette should score, Lacazette does score, makes it 2-0 against Burnley. And Hey guys, how's it going? It is S2G and welcome back to another episode of the Arsenal Career Mode series. Last episode, we did a madness. We signed Jan Oblak from Atletico Madrid for 120 million. Probably the most ridiculous transfer I've made in any of my FIFA career modes because signing a goalkeeper for over 100 million is just insane. But we are not done yet. This transfer window is turning out to be ridiculous for us. And I have one more transfer to make. A certain German attacking midfielder. We'll see how things go with that transfer. A lot of player sales as well in today's episode. More Premier League games. Should be a lot of fun. So we are still six points behind Chelsea. Which is definitely frustrating. But lately results have been going our way. We're on a four game win streak in the Premier League. And I'm looking forward to continuing that. So if you guys are enjoying this Arsenal career mode. A like would be absolutely fantastic. Let's try and smash out. 1,000 likes once again. It really helps the channel grow. And also, we're getting closer and closer to 100,000 subscribers. Hopefully, we can get there as soon as possible. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so. Starting off the episode with a press conference. And if you guys want to get involved, you all know what to do. Drop in your questions down in the comment section below. Why don't you start Bergwijn instead of Nabri or Hudson Odoi? Because when you play him, you usually win. That is actually a very good observation. At least lately, Steven Bergwijn has been getting the job done for us down the right or even down the left wherever he's played he's been scoring important goals for me and I want to continue using him so I'm actually thinking of benching Nabri for a few games and giving Bergwijn a good run and seeing how he performs Nabri has kind of underperformed in his time here at Arsenal 21 games only five goals and four assists whereas Bergwijn has 10 goal contributions I mean it's pretty similar but then again we've used Bergwijn more of a super sub so I think it's a smart choice you know to give Bergwijn more game time we'll see if he can you know take this opportunity and make it his own next question how will you line up with Kai Havertz so let's say we do ultimately manage to sign Kai Havertz in this trans window my plan to use him is going to be in a 4 triple 2 formation I know it's a bit different to what we have right now but I'll be using my two strikers up front of course and instead of Callum Hudson-Odoi we can play Kai Havertz in there we can either use Callum Hudson-Odoi as a super sub or play him down the left it's going to be tricky to you know sort out the team and all that but I think it's going to be a great transfer and Kai Havertz is going to offer us a lot of, you know, variation in our tactics. If we want to play a 4-1-2-1-2 narrow and get a cam involved in our team, we can do that now with Kai Havertz. And I can't wait to try out all these new formations with him. So I'm hoping we can, you know, get that signing sorted. But yeah, a 4 2 formation is what I'll look to try at first with him. Next question, why are you so desperate to use Lacazette so much and get a new cam at least? So the second part of your question, yes, we are trying to bring in a new cam in Kai Havertz of course but about the first part about being desperate to use Lacazette I don't think I'm being desperate I, I mean he's just been incredible for us last season he scored 30 goals for us in the Premier League not 30 in fact he scored 32 equaling Mo Salah's record and that's why we continue to use him even this season at this moment he's the top scorer in the Premier League with 13 goals in 17 games he's been great for us a lot better than Jovic and the only reason in a way I'm using Jovic at the moment is because of the objective we've got to try and complete with him so well yeah I'm gonna continue using Lacazette not because I'm desperate to use him but just because he's our captain our leader and our top scorer that's it for the press conference let's move on anyways and Dom Bele wins the player of the episode award he's been picking up a lot of these awards lately again a fantastic episode scored goals assisted as well in the last one he's been phenomenal in that midfield probably our best player this season and that's why you guys voted for him as your player of the episode here's a quick look at our season and goals before we move on with other stuff we're doing well with the Luka Jovic challenge 19 goal contributions with him he's on track to you know complete the objective again trusting the youth hopefully with FA Cup games coming up soon we should be able to complete that challenge soon as well again I really want to try and win the FA Cup this season 
and hopefully we can complete the silverware challenge. Kai Havertz is going to be a ridiculous transfer for us to pull off. He's valued at 64 million. To generate those kind of funds, we definitely need Moussa Dembele and Bern Leno to be sold as soon as possible. And even then, it's going to be really difficult to try and get the transfer done. We'll see if it's possible. Getting this game against Watford out of the way. They're not having the best of seasons. It's at home at the Emirates Stadium. We should be able to win this game. Good to see Jovic score. Definitely will help with the objectives. Hudson Odoi and Nabri come up with the goods as well. 3-0 win and we continue our Premier League run. Oh well, this is not good news. Longley has suffered a torn hip flexor and that means he'll be out for the next six weeks. That is actually terrible, man. Well, we do have Upamecano and Joshua Jacobs. It's going to be a big few weeks for them. Hopefully, we'll have Longley back for the game against Real Madrid, at least the first leg. I think he'll be back for the second leg, but the first leg, it's a big doubt. Okay, this is brilliant. Moussa Dembele has been sold for 40 million to Leverkusen. And we do get about 36 million for him. We've got about 46 in the bank. We still need to sell Bern Leno. And after that, we should be able to sign... Kai Havertz. Hopefully we can get this deal done. So we haven't received a transfer offer yet for Burn Leno. So we're going to have to wait a bit on the Kai Havertz transfer. So for now, let's focus on the Premier League. Chelsea have been dropping points lately. Finally, they've been struggling, which means if we can beat Brighton away from home, we'll be just a couple of points off them. So I'm hoping we can beat them away from home. So it's a game I'm going to be playing. Let's see how it goes. So this is Jan Oblak's Premier League debut. Can't wait to see how he performs. Joshua Jacobs as well gets the nod ahead of Longley because of Longley's injury. And also Torreira is suspended and that's why Bensancourt comes into the lineup. I'm starting Bedguin as well. As I told you guys, I want to give Bedguin more game time. Time. Lautaro Martinez ahead of Jovic as well because Lautaro has been in great form lately. So this is how I'm lining up. I mean business. Let's go out there and win. That's a good ball played in. Wan Bisaka gets it away. That's actually well defended by Joshua Jacobs and Wan Bisaka. Risky football from the two, but it worked. And here goes Aaron Wan Bisaka pushing forward out wide now to Hudson Odoi. Here we go on the attack now. Callum Hudson Odoi with all the pace puts it back in. Lautaro Martinez shoots it, hits the crossbar, and they clear it off. The line, not really the line, but they just cleared it anyways. Lacazette probably could have got there on the rebound. That's a big chance gone. And Dom Belade as well finds Ben Sancourt. Now Lautaro flicks it up once, flicks it again, tries to shoot. He does get the shot off from a difficult situation, but it's way above the crossbar. Martin Montoya, the former Barcelona Academy product. Oh, what? What just happened here? What even was that? Brighton have taken the lead in this one, and I'm confused because... I don't even know what happened. One Bisaka with the worst clearance possible gives it away to Brighton and then it just bounced off a few plays and went in. I need to have a look at the replay because it was just chaos. Cross comes in. One Bisaka with an awful clearance. It literally hit Joshua Jacobs' head. Oh my god, this is just embarrassing. What even is this game, man? FIFA 19 literally frustrates me so much. Brighton have the advantage. And Dom Bele finds Bedguin. It's now Lacazette. Oh, that's brilliant there. Great touch from Lacazette. Should score this. Wow. How has the keeper saved that? Lacazette had placed that perfectly in the bottom right corner. Somehow, the Australian keeper, Ryan, gets a hand to it. I'm actually substituting Lautaro Martinez. He hasn't really had the best of games. And bringing in a striker like Jovic, I think, could help. Let's see how he plays. Finds Endom Bele. Oh, and Dombele might have space to shoot, does have space to shoot, and you cannot stop this man in this kind of form. And Dombele equalizes for Arsenal. This guy has been a machine for us this season in that midfield, going up and down, defending, creating chances, and now scoring goals as well. What a player. Oh, I've just given the ball away there, and Oblak saves the day. What a save there from Jan Oblak. I was so frustrated there for a moment. Jonathan Tarr just completely... Forgetting how to play football and passes it right to a Brighton player. Thankfully, Jan Oblak was there to make the save. It's Brighton with the corner now. 70 minutes gone. Jahan Baksh puts it in. Decent header as well. One Bisanka trying to get it away. It's complete chaos. Keeper saves. Just clear the ball away. And Junior Firpo does exactly that. That's a phenomenal save right there from Jan Oblak. Oh, come on. No freaking way, man. This is so annoying. FIFA 19 just makes me want to break my controller and just snap it into half. Brighton have taken the lead. And you know what? It is actually deserved. We weren't great in this game. And our win streak of, what, five or six games in the Premier League has come to an end. And Brighton have beaten us 2-1. Well, we still have about five minutes left. But with the way we've played so far, highly unlikely that we're going to get back into this. Again, 
terrible way. We just gave the ball away. Junior Firpo making a mistake again. And then even Jan Oblak, who's had a tremendous game, by the way, couldn't keep that one out. Full time. And well, we've been defeated. And this is a big loss to take because we were just about closing the gap between us and Chelsea. If we would have won this game, we would have been just two points behind Chelsea. But guess what? We bought a lot of opportunity and now we are still five points behind them. The title race is still on. But if we continue to drop points like this, it's not going to end well for us. That is a huge offer from West Ham for Burn Leno, 46 million. But you know what? We can actually try and negotiate to get a bit more for him. I'm going to try and negotiate to get at least 55 million. Let's see if West Ham are willing to accept that. As I said, I'm countering with 55 million. Let's see if... Well, West Ham are willing to accept that. 55 million for Burn Leno, and they are. I probably should have gone for more then. Anyways, 55 million. Hopefully, this deal will go through soon. Interestingly, our next game is against West Ham in the FA Cup's round four. Of course, we're going to be playing this one, not taking a chance. But the funny thing is, the Leno deal hasn't gone through yet, which I guess is a good thing for us. We won't have to face him. Hopefully, after we potentially knock out West Ham, we can, you know, wrap up the Leno transfer and move on to Kai Havertz. Anyways, up next, FA Cup action as we face West Ham. I know I'm taking a fairly big risk trying out a new formation before a knockout game but you know what before we sign Kai Havertz I want to give this 4 triple 2 formation a go and see how it plays so that's what I'm doing a new formation really eager to see how it works. Jovic starts this game Lacazette as well Nabri down the left Hudson Odoi down the right Torreira and Dombele in midfield let me just switch the two of them around and make that that way perfect and this is the team I'm going for also starting a few youngsters like Robertson goal Maitland Niles as well hopefully we can knock West Ham out of the competition difficult down opportunity Torreira saves the day there and Roberts with this save again chaos at the back but thankfully we defended well this time around one thing I'm really eager to see is how we defend with having like two CDMs will it work hopefully it will now Alexandra Lacazette back to Jovic Back to Lacazette now. Lacazette does brilliantly. Laying this one off to Callum Hudson. Odoi tries to chip the keeper. Lacazette couldn't do much there on the rebound. Here's Jovic now pushing forward. Now bringing the ball inside. Jovic goes for the finesse shot. And that's so close to going in. Massive opportunity for the Serbian gone. Here's Lacazette. I'm waiting for some movement. One Bisaka pushing forward. That is a decent cross to Nabri. Controls it brilliantly. That's a fantastic first touch from Serge Nabri. But Ndidi with the block. Still Jovic. Twisting and turning his man finds Lacazette brilliantly. Lacazette shoots and scores. I'm loving this 4 triple 2 formation, man. It is so good as Arsenal take the lead against West Ham. And it's that man, Lacazette, who scores an important goal for us. Jovic with the assist as well. But have a look at that play there from Jovic. Just superb. The pass as well to Lacazette. And of course, the finish. That's what Lacazette does best. 1-0 Arsenal. Out wide to Callum hudson -Odoi. Oh, brilliantly done there by him. Cuts this one back to Lacazette. How on earth has the West Ham defender blocked that? Winston Reid there with a great clearance. Oh, here goes Lacazette now. Could cross it in. Does exactly that. Nabri controls. Nabri shoots and scores. That first touch from Serge Nabri created the goal. And he's going to do the celebration. 2-0 up against West Ham. Lacazette has really turned things up in this game. He gets the assist for this one. A phenomenal cross with his weak foot. Again, the pressure there from Lacazette to win the ball back was superb. But look at that for a first touch and finish from Nabri. Brilliant. West Ham trying to get back into this game with a corner. And well, they have scored. It's so unfortunate, man, to concede a goal like that. But one thing that you guys probably noticed... Why on earth was Lucas Torreira standing near post? Like, how on earth is he going to defend Arnauto? Which it makes no sense. Like, look at this. Lucas Torreira is, what, 5'3", five, 5'4"? Five, five, look at how tiny he is. Why on earth is he defending against Arnautovic? This game makes no sense. Making a few changes for the remainder of this one because of fitness reasons. Ben Sancor and Rhys Nelson, come on. Lacazette sees Rhys Nelson making a run. Here he goes forward. Rhys Nelson on the attack now. Tries to bring it inside. Goes for goal. Oh, that's brilliantly done there by Rhys Nelson. A fantastic cameo from him in the FA Cups round four as we make it 3-1 against West Ham. And that's that for this one. Job done as we've knocked out West Ham from the FA Cup. Can't wait to find out who we'll be facing. But most importantly, I guess the 4 triple 2 formation is here to stay. I really enjoyed using it. So there you have it. Burn Leno has been sold to West Ham for about 55 million. We get 50 million in our transfer budget. Let's see how much money we've got. About 97 million. Hopefully that should be enough to sign Kai Havertz. All right, here we go. Gonna try and sign Kai Havertz. The 87 rated Cam. Some of his stats right now are just insane. He's actually really quick as well for someone who's that tall. 
decent finishing stats, the dribbling, the passing, the ball control. I think he's going to be amazing for us. Let's wrap this deal up. So I'm straight up going with a big offer. I don't want to disrespect Bayer Leverkusen. So 70 million is what I'm offering for Kai Havertz. And wow, they've actually accepted that. That seems like a bargain to me. 70 million for Kai Havertz, someone who's 87 rated and only 21. That is nuts. So this is what I'm offering Kai Havertz, a crucial squad role, five-year contract length, 81,000 in wages and about 800,000 in the signing bonus. Let's see if he accepts that. He wants 94 in wages, which is fair, you know, for someone as good as him. So there you go. That's the contract I've offered him. He's accepted it. And Kai Havertz is now... An Arsenal player. What a signing this is. And there's the announcement. Arsenal sealed Kai Havertz signing for 70 million. What a signing this is, man. Like, to get him for that price as well is just unreal. The fact that we had to pay more for Jan or Black and less for Kai Havertz is actually insane. Anyways, he's going to be wearing the number 10 jersey. And of course, Kalim hudson who wore the number 10 jersey before, is going to get number 21. Let me know if you guys want me to, you know, switch things around with kit numbers. So we've got a game against Nottingham. Forest in the Premier League, a team that are struggling right now in the competition. It just makes sense to sim this game and get it out of the way. Ben Sancor has scored the early goal for us and we do win 2-1 with Lautaro and Ben Sancor getting the goals. Joshua Jacobs getting sent off. That is a bit of a problem because now he won't be playing the next game. It is good to know that Ben Chilwell's injury is not serious and he'll be out for about a week, which isn't that bad. Well, 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 Chelsea are in free fall right now as they've lost another game, which means we're just a couple of points off them. And even though we lost our game to Brighton, if we can now beat Middlesbrough in a game where Kai Havertz will be making his debut, we can get real close to the top of the Premier League. So we're going to be playing this next game against Boro. Let's hope we can win. So with Longley out in injured and Joshua Jacobs suspended for this game, I am going to be giving Harvey Moore, one of our Youth Academy prospects, his first team debut. Can't wait to see how he performs. He's six foot four. He's got some incredible stats with 75 sprint speed. He's a bit tragic on the ball, but we can work on that. It's a 64 rated player starting in a Premier League game. So I'm not sure how this is going to go down because of injuries. We are forced to do this, but it'll be fun to see how this guy turns out. Potentially the next Joshua Jacobs. Crazy how we're just saying that. Anyways, apart from that, it's a very strong team that I've gone I'm also going to start Bear Queen. And you know what? Let's give Ben Sancor a game instead of Torreira. That is my lineup for this one against Boro. Kai Havertz making his Arsenal debut. Jan Oblak starts as well. Let's go out there and win. It is Middlesbrough on the attack now. Cross comes in. Harvey Moe with the clearance. He needs to have a big game here. And I'm hoping he does because it's exciting to see your youth academy prospects perform well. And Dom Bele. You now here goes Kai Havertz on the attack. Come on. Here's Kai Havertz. Brings it inside brilliantly. Goes for goal. But that's a good block there from Ayala. Still nil-nil against Boro. Luka Jovic now on the attack. Brings it inside, finds Lacazette, and now it is Bergwijn with a chance. But that left foot, oh man, I knew it was going to happen because that left foot is just not good enough. Although, chance for a cross to come in. Decent delivery there from Kai Havertz, but Bergwijn couldn't really do much. He's not good in the air. It's a corner, Kai Havertz to take. Let's see if he can put in a good delivery. It is a great delivery, and that should have been a goal. How on earth has Ben Sancor not scored that? Diouf there with a phenomenal save. I mean, just look at that. Ben Sancor, completely free header. Somehow the goalkeeper has saved it. I feel we need something extra going forwards in this game. And that's why Luka Jovic is going to come off for Lautaro Martinez. And I'm going to bring on Nabri for Berguin. Taking it wide. Still Kai Havertz now back inside. Could maybe cut this one back. Does exactly that. Lautaro Martinez's shot is saved there. How, man? This keeper's not letting anything in. To Kai Havertz. Or beats this man. Still Kai Havertz. Could go for goal. Does exactly that. And it's off the post and on the rebound. He couldn't do much. How, man? How is it still nil-nil? Well, Kai Havertz's debut has ended in disappointment as we've drawn against Middlesbrough. This was our chance to close the gap down even more, but we just couldn't. Kai Havertz, although he had a decent game, couldn't really score or assist. But man, it was such a struggle. We created so many chances, but the ball just wouldn't go in. Well, this is perfect. Chelsea continue to drop points. They only could get a draw from their previous game, which means we are still two points behind them. We've got a really good chance 
to overtake them in the next episode. It's not going to be easy though because the games we've got in the next episode are just insanely difficult. We've got Everton in the Premier League, Liverpool and I might fit in that Man City game. Probably not because we've also got Real Madrid in the Champions League's round of 16 in the next episode. It's going to be nuts. So the transfer window is coming to a close. We're on deadline day and I don't really think we need to do more business. We spent 189 million bringing in Jan Oblak and Kai Havertz in this transfer window we've done great and now our job is to try and find the best way to fit in all these players and hopefully we can do so and we need to do it quickly because next episode first leg champions league round of 16 against real madrid that's going to be massive i can't wait for that oh my god this is not happening is it jonathan tar has suffered a sprained ankle and he'll be out for a month which means Against Real Madrid, we will be without Longley and Jonathan Tarr. Our first choice centre-backs won't be available against Real Madrid. This is a disaster. The bad luck, man. How can we have such bad luck? Joshua Jacobs and Upamecano have a tough job ahead of them against Real Madrid. It's going to be a tremendous next episode. So much drama. We've actually made decent amount of progress in today's episode for our season goals. We're now on 21 goal contributions with Jovic and also 28 appearances from our youth academy players. We should be done with the trusting the youth challenge in the next few episodes. Today's episode wasn't the best for us in terms of gameplay, so it was difficult choosing the nominees for player of the episode. But I've gone with Alexandra Lacazette as one of them because in that game against West Ham in the FA Cup, he was brilliant. Scored a goal, assisted the other two goals, and that's why he's been nominated. Your second nominee is going to be Serge Gnabry, who I thought had a decent episode as well. He scored a brilliant goal against West Ham that gave us the lead in that game, and that's why those two are your nominees. Lacazette or Gnabry, click the i button on the top right of your screen to vote. Well, guys, that is that for today's episode. Really hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Transfer window is done. We've signed Kai Havertz and Jan Oblak. Now it's time to look forward to the big Champions League knockout game. Can't wait for that. The Premier League title race is heating up as well. This series is getting even more interesting as episodes go on. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, drop a like on the video. That helps the channel grow. Subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll see you guys next time for another episode of the Arsenal Career Mode.